policy. If there is one policy to come out of the coalition that was a left fielder that no party campaigned on, no party campaigned on this, and it ends up being in the coalition agreement, largely we understand, at the behest of New Zealand First. It is essentially a stop or putting a pin in a number of reforms designed to restrict the ability to buy tobacco products in this country um, and as part of a strategy to eradicate tobacco consumption uh, and addiction. Oh, let's call it what it is, a tobacco addiction uh, and the health the negative health impacts of that and the, indeed, fatalities that come from that, uh, those seem to have been abandoned and no one campaigned on that, no one asked for it. And it's not exactly clear why it's been done. And the argument that it would have caused a black market, well, then decriminalised cocaine and marijuana. Um, joining us now from ASH, which is kind of the pseudo-government health promotion agent, agency, is uh, Ben Newton. Ben, uh, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good morning. Ben, can I ask you first, was your group aware of this political move that this was likely to be the outcome of a change of government? Did you have any idea or see this coming? Um, I, I don't think anybody saw that it would be part of the coalition agreement to, to completely repeal the, the Act. Uh, obviously, we knew that um, coalition partners Act in New Zealand first had issues with elements of that legislation, um, particularly some of the ones around uh, removing nicotine and, and reducing the number of stores. Um, and it may be that those particular parts may need some kind of review or repeal and they may not have been happy about them. But when the coalition agreements came out and said it was going to repeal the entire Act, that, that certainly wasn't something that, that we'd expected to see. Yeah. Is it a complete abandonment of any government initiative to reduce smoking and reduce ticket nicotine use, or are parts of the policies still there that will curb the addiction to nicotine? Uh, well, I hope there's I hope there's something that can be salvaged from from this because I mean, looking at what the coalition partners didn't want, it's with particular reference to, to the kind of three headline policies of the smoke regeneration, the nicotine reduction and, and dropping the stores to, to 600 next year. There's other stuff in the Act that's actually really important and I think serves the purposes of everybody, not least the regulations which were about licensing retailers and having stronger controls about who's selling tobacco and, and how it's sold, mm. as well as improving some of the regulations around vaping. So I think, and those are things actually, if it's about retail crime for New Zealand First and, and Act, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater because you're getting rid of provisions which actually help have better controls and knowledge around ben, the supply chain. Uh, under the it. proposed laws, how many shops would have been able to sell tobacco products in New Zealand? And when would that have it, come into force? It would have been 600, um, down from an estimated 6,000 by June 2020, uh, 2024. So it would have been a ninety percent reduction in in well, well six that months, is really, pretty draconian months. and pretty quick. Yeah, and certainly when when Ash submitted on the legislation, um, we we felt that a sort of rapid overnight reduction could well cause some some issues and and some concerns. And um, we'd like to have perhaps seen a, a, a slow rate of reduction, which I think would have been probably more pragmatic and worked in line with smoking rates going down. Um, and actually, in retrospect, probably, I think, not have caused such kind of fear and concern amongst the, the retail sector, which I think has been kind of picked okay, up. Okay, are you saying, by, Ben, are you saying that Ash admits there is a legitimate concern there from the retailers, I, I think, from the dairy people? Because they seem to have been part of the drive for this. I, 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 of course there is. I mean, if there's 6,000 people selling cigarettes and they've, they've largely known, I'm not been sure what's going to happen and under a very, very short timeline to reduce down to, to, to 600. And I think that um, we certainly suggested during the, the process of the bill going through, uh, going through Parliament last year um, that there needed to be a bit more engagement with that, that sector and, and um, supporting them through that transition. Um, and I think it has, yeah, the, the fact that that hasn't necessarily happened has definitely been um, 
caused quite a bit of this this concern and this backlash as as well, which has come from the coalition partners. Yeah. So it's not about saying we don't want that the reduction. But in even you are prepared to admit that there was maybe too much, too fast. Uh, what about the thing with? And I understand this kind of creeping grandparenting or grandchilding ability and access to tobacco. Does that continue or not? Um, if the if the act is repealed, then no, it won't. 